find all kinds of these. And they suck. Welcome back to the bench. Just a little update on the uh, encoder. For like the uh, 655 striker, well actually the majority of the radios that are out there, the 447 HPC2 and the 955. I'm sure there's also an update and an upgrade for the Anytone, but that's one of the main reasons I pushed that radio after they're fine tuned stock. I, I really wouldn't even own one. But there is. Uh, I don't know if I'll go through the time to do it to figure out which one's required because I, I put, you know, the Anytones through the test like you can't imagine. You've seen it. Plenty of video gates. I've been running the Anytone radio on and off way prior than I see. Before YouTube? No, not before YouTube. But anyways, let's uh, <clears throat> get into this. These two here are what you're going to buy from, let me see if I can adjust this, Striker's website. Okay. Try to keep them separated. Even though they're all like identical, they're all the same. What you buy on the website is the same thing that comes out of the radio. This came out of the tester. Okay. Brand new. I'll get into these here shortly. This is the one that, uh, let's see, this one here came out of my Jeep. See a little bit of black around there, right before the threads. And we're going to pull this thing apart and take a look at it. It's a typical mechanical type of encoder. There really isn't much to it. Really. I've already separated the little pins to get it apart. Let me see it again. It's got latches on the side. I got them separated so it'll come apart pretty easy. These two pins here are attached to the actual housing for a ground. It, as long as this thing is attached to the metal chassis, it's grounded. So these really don't do anything at all whatsoever. The, well, we'll get into that here in a minute. So we get her to focus. As you can see, it's just this shaft that's pressed onto this. Like It's not really a gear, but <clears throat> we'll call it a gear. You see the indentations and the notches. And some kind of a fiber that's on there. It does have grease on it. That may have been one of my brush hairs. Type of thing. Or a mopo hair. But anyways, you, you can pretty much see what it is. Alright. Keep that in mind. See if I get a better focus on it. Nothing electrical here at all whatsoever. This is just a tab. I'm just going to tape that off. If it comes off. Yeah. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave it on. It doesn't need to come off. I'll put it back together. Well, there it is. I'll leave it on. Hold on. Make sure I don't lose it. Well, it's history. I just took it off. It doesn't do anything. Alright, there we go. See it? On this side, you got four pins. You have a common in the center. These two can be actually touching or pushed together and soldered together. It's just a common, as you can see. Well, you're going to see that here in a second. And then you're up and down. Well, I'm not sure which one's up or down, how it makes contact. That would be for direction. Then you have this uh, other neoprene piece. It's right there. Let me see if I can get a picture of that. Picture. So I 
anything to get closer. Okay, those gears or the actual notches, what they do is they shift this lever here. Let's get focused again. This camera doesn't just have a little touch thing on the screen where it automatically focuses. Come on. There you go. See it down there? I'm trying to look through the camera in that there too. See how that works? This goes back and forth and makes connector and connection on either side. See the pins? That's all it does. The spring pressure of those pins. So let's put it back together so you see how it actually works. Yeah, that's all that's all that's going on. I might connect an LED to these and put the drill on them for some testing. I gotta do more testing before I do that. See how that's gonna work out. For like the new Japanese ones versus these and put my electric drill and not my battery operated drill on there. Set the RPM maybe a thousand or something like that and just let them go. Now these were ordered from a manufacturer that had the actual pot that I'm using right now. But when I ordered these as a replacement and the radio is no longer manufactured, this is what came. You see they're all the same. So we could take these two or this one. Here look. This is exactly the same stuff. Just different lot numbers. Part numbers don't seem to mean anything. Same thing. With the circuit board on it. Now let's uh, take one of these. It's all exactly the same thing. Watch. So, <clears throat> I was on a radio a few days ago. I had a great gait, man. Would have pissed off a whole bunch of people. <laughs> but there's a bunch of cool guys out there. Between the bowl, sideband, 28 other frequencies. But I was kind of in a mood. Some of you guys might remember that. I was kind of moody, and I get moody at times. But I try to keep it contained. And what it was about was, I ordered these uh, Alpine, Alps potentiometers over a week ago. And I spent some pretty good money on the shipping to get them within a week versus $1.28 and get them within like 90 flipping days. And I don't need that. Oh, there's old Gilmore. Waters, Mason, right? Yeah. Watching the concert. We all hope we will today. Yep, 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 yep. That was a great tune when he came out. Back to back to business here. So I think it was either Friday or Saturday. You know, certain accounts, emails, I you know, it's bank account, this account, that account, Facebook. You know, website, you know what I mean. So uh, I'm checking that one, and uh, it says that it wasn't shipped because they don't ship to a post office box, right? So I'm like, what the hell, man? 
you know, you let me pay for it. You didn't say nothing about it then. So we went back and forth, you know, a little bit. But anyways, it shows that it's, it was shipped FedEx after he hauled back and forth yesterday. Yeah, even yesterday, Sunday. And it's en route now, five to six days. So I still have a little bit more time. I know some guys are patient, some guys aren't. Some are saying, who gives a shit? And some are wondering. So, you know, I want the best radio out there. I don't want second best. If I get if I get in a race, if I'm in a race, I promise you, I don't enter for second place. I might take second or third or fourth or fifth, but I promise you, I'm not in the race to lose, okay? You with me on that? Do I look like somebody that uh just plays? No. So anyways, I want the best radios that are out there. I want them to last a decade or two. They're not all going to last that long. People take care of them in different ways. One thing I've noticed about these is weather. you got to remember, I've been dealing with striker radios for, since they came out. Normally, I'm the, uh, I'm, I'm the first one that will investigate and test a radio that's out. Whenever, be, sometimes before they're in the country. I just don't always talk about it. And YouTube, Facebook, it's all very, very new stuff. And one thing that I've noticed for the type of customers that I have, they're nationwide, you know, border to border, coast to coast. Different weather, different types of drivers, terrain. And heat has been the factor in, uh, where's it at? Right there. Heat. And it's usually always going down in frequency. It's just the way it is. At least that's what I have the conclusion that I've come up with. And once it starts to skip going down from heat, it's different types of plastic or neoprene. I don't know exactly what it all is. And as I st as I look at it now, I start to study it. This isn't perfectly round. Sometimes you look through the camera and you see more stuff than... But when I do that in the radios too, sometimes. Focus a little bit better. It's a beautiful camera, but sometimes doing this, it's not made for these type of videos. Try this. See how it's not round, it's not machined at the end? As we look at this, I guess you would call that the sleeve. That's not going to hold that in there very well, you know. I'm not saying that is the problem, but I would say that might be part of it. Maybe the way it's held together, whatever it is, it just, they skip. For you guys that, like for the 655s and a 955 and 447, you flip it to Sesame Street, you know, the business channel, and you don't change channels ever, I'm sure it's going to last for a decade or so. Max Mod, Polymar Transistors, my tune naturally. I'm sure you, you know the new ones out of the box, eBay or whatever, but just don't let nobody touch it with capacitors and the grease job, you know. Stay away from that stupid shit. Leave them a factory or get it fine tuned. Are there other people out there that they can't? show you the necessary calibration and a real bench of what like the plague. And I don't mean just flashy some weird shit, I mean the real deal. Getting back to this. <clears throat> There's a 655 on the way back. As of uh, last December, somewhere around that he bought it and he just PM'd me that and it doesn't even work anymore. The radio's fine, but first it started skipping, then uh, it stopped working entirely. Somehow I get some change channels, but that's gotta be really aggravating. Cause I know mine did the same thing and I know it happens. And temperature, hot and cold, and it seems like the hot is the worst. This gentleman has a slip seat driver. 
So it's more than one person using the radio and you know as well as I do, the other person doesn't operate your shit like you do. <laughs> they just don't, you know. Or if you start bumping the knobs, etc., that can cause you another problem. So what I'm thinking about doing, it's not chiseled in stone yet, you know. But uh, I want to test them, and I might even do something on video a little bit more. Even though I got a bunch of them coming, but I, I like to get more than two or three or five or ten because it gives me the opportunity to test them. Minimum three. And just beat the hell out of them. I do that with just about any anything that I utilize or change in a radio. Minimum three, and they have to be within a specific tolerance, depending on what it is. So I wanna hammer the hell out of a couple of them. I'm gonna use one in my own personal radio. I can't wait, actually. I can't flip and wait. The, the one of them's in my Jeep radio, and it's working fantastic. I just sit there and just spin it. I can roll it, turn it, change it, and you see when I did do it. So what I'm thinking is, while the radio's here, if you tell me you want it at the beginning of the sale, no changing minds. That changing mind thing is just way too much for one person. I have a large volume of radios that I go through and or repair, still repairing. And doing what I do here, I, I do a lot more than I show. So I'm thinking while I'm tuning the radio, it's already here, the box is open, that box, that radio, that serial number, you get my point? There's only so much room that the person goes, I don't care how big your shop is, you're, you're going to run out of room and get disorganized. So I try to do one radio at a time. There might be a stack of them, but I try to do one at a time and everything's going to be the, it's like the same thing. So while it's open, then I can install the, the new encoder for 75 bucks to my customers. To ship them in, if you're not my customer, please don't take it wrong, but I'm not interested. Buy a new radio with it. It's just too much work, too much time, and I can't get my, my real customers, my proven customers' equipment done. That's who my priority is, proven customers. Futuristically, if you are a customer, and you want to send it in, it's got a flaw, it's going to be more. It's going to be more than that. And you consider, I, I, yes, I know you bought it from me or whatever, it's still going to be more. The time it takes to receive it, unpack it, pack it after it's replaced, and then the packaging has to be correct. All the variables when people, you know, ship a radio, it's, it's a lot more than people think. The phone calls, the time, you know, getting in touch with each other, different times, different coast, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm trying to limit it to basically my customers and, you know, a brand new radio. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, if I'll just ask you or I'll for, yeah, on the phone, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. And I think 75 bucks installed is going to be a pretty good deal on a brand new radio. But like I said, I want to test them more. The uh, 447, that's just going to be if it goes bad. It's, 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 a different, it's a different type of work. It's more work. And I, I haven't seen any go bad yet or haven't really heard anybody complaining on a 447 that they're going bad because it's that type of radio. People don't really sit there and spin the dial. It's the 955. By the way, uh, the ones that I'm getting and the radios that these go in, which I don't know what I'll even do with these, you know, I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use the, uh, the Alps. But they were for a VFO, an incremental VFO. But still, it was a BFO made to be spun. I've actually even thought about, not a Venier, 
but a knob that'll spin. A vineyard would be nice if you're reduction you can sit there and spin it, but that's, that's too much too much on the weight of too much weight, too much room on the front of the radio. And then, I don't know. You'd have to be able to get on close to it, otherwise the stress, you know, on the outside. But that's not even necessary to sit there and spin it. Spin it and spin it, like I've done with the drill. Alright, I think I covered as much as I wanted to cover. I hope everybody's having a great week. We're poking along. I did get moved, by the way. Yeah, moved again. The old trailer trasher moved again. The big old bus. Yep, 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 yep. But I only moved like, I don't know, 260 to 75 feet south. Yep, I got my little own oasis now. It's kind of cool. I'm digging it so far. So I've been tired working and getting all scratched and trees and moving stuff and turning it back up and working on radios and yeah, getting scratched up a little. <clears throat> but uh, I wanted to be able to use my radio a little bit more. <clears throat> I still have some noise. This I don't know where it's coming from. It's not coming from my shop. It's outside. This shop is like a Faraday cage. It's made for tuning. But there are some, there is some other things around me, I guess, 150 feet either direction in my east and west. I do have a transformer and a power line, but instead of just feet away, I'm pretty far away now from power lines. So the people that I've been talking to, and you know I'm on the base, let me know what you think. Same exact radio, same everything, but I'm calculating that there's going to be a difference that you should be able to notice. I, I could hear a little bit, but I could hear a lot better as a matter of fact, you know, a lot better. It's going to be hard to beat that Jeep though. I didn't mean to bore anybody. We're getting them done one at a time. Uh, if you're interested in these, let me know and I'll keep you informed. It ain't going to be until they said five, six days. I looked at the little map thing, you know. It's not even FedEx's site, it's FedEx IE, whatever the IE is supposed to mean. It's en route with a tracking number. And it said five or six days. So it'll probably be, it'll be sooner than that. And then I gotta get them in here and play with them and check them out and make sure they're the exact product that I ordered. Anytime I order from a new supplier or someone that I don't really know, it makes it rough, you know? Especially if I'm gonna put this in your radio. So I want to do some testing, all right? Yeah, and Striker, I'm not messing with you. Arp Limited, I'm not messing with you. It's the same shit is what it is. Some of you guys know Striker and Arp Limited. No, I don't play. I'm very, very, very straightforward about things. <laughs> A couple of you, a couple of the guys know it. It's it's amazing. It's kind of cool who's actually watching my videos. And thanks, by the way. Thanks. Comments are welcome. By the way, don't feel bashful to click subscribe, like, dislike, hate, love, whatever you got to do. Maybe we'll catch you out there soon in DX land. Okay. First personalist mark 163 hard drive. That mud duck radio in the desert. We're clear and gone. Click, click.